Hey, everybody, and welcome to the first ever Theological Thursday conversation with myself, Jonathan Williams, pastor at Forefront, and our executive director at Forefront, Sarah New. Why are we doing this? Number one, we're bored because of this virus. But number two, we believe that we are still called to usher in the next 500 years of Christianity. And in doing so, we believe there are certain tenets that allow us to usher in that next 500 years. And so what we want to do over the next few weeks is we want to talk about some of the ways we believe we're ushering in the next 500 years. And we're going to start today with one of your biggest questions. In fact, this question comes up more than any other. And Sarah, what is that giant question that always comes up? How do we read scripture? Do we read it literally? Why not? All that jazz. (laughs) Yes. Is scripture true? How do we read it? What does it look like? Is it still relevant? Well, let me throw this at you. I think people ask us all the time, is the Bible true? And the answer is, yes, the Bible is true. And then people say, well, should we read the Bible literally? To which I always say, I think you're asking the wrong question. Let me give you an example of that. Sarah, what if I came to you and I said to you, Sarah, I'm madly in love with someone, um, assuming I wasn't married and all the rest. What would you, how would you respond to that? I'd be like, great, tell me about this person. And I would say to you, I would say, okay, well, this person's five foot seven and they weigh 157 pounds and they have a small scar on their forehead. They're amazing. What might you say? (laughs) Like, why are you being so weird? Also, tell me more about this person. Like, who is this person? I still don't know anything. Right. But I would say, no, I'm telling you some truth about this person. They're five foot seven. They're 157 pounds. They have a small scar on their forehead. And you would be like. (laughs) Tell me, who is this person? I still have no clue. Exactly. To my point, my point is when we talk about whether or not the Bible is true, often we're talking about literal truth. And literal truth is great. In fact, literal truth gives us facts and figures and statistics. Literal truth has been responsible for many of uh, our greatest feats in humanity. And there are some literal truths in the Bible. But literal truth can't always answer the questions that we have in Scripture. Perhaps there are other truths we should be paying attention to. So... You know, what are some examples, I guess, of literal versus deeper truths and when we mistake one for the other? Yeah. So, for example, Adam and Eve, right? That's always a big one. Did Adam and Eve really exist? And if they didn't exist, can we trust the Bible to be true? Well, perhaps that's not the right question to ask. Perhaps what we want to ask is what kind of truth is being conveyed through the story of Adam and Eve? And I would say this, that's what's being conveyed is, is this question of creation. How did we get to this place And this question of how God is continually and constantly redeeming us, even when we're less than perfect. To me, it's a story of reconciliation. It's a story of how to move forward, even in the midst of our imperfections and the way that God is in that with us, right? That's one example. I would say, though, the biggest example is um, Jonah and the whale. This comes up all of the time. Did Jonah really get swallowed by a whale? And if he didn't, can we trust the Bible? And I would say we can absolutely trust the Bible, even if Jonah didn't get swallowed by a whale, because there's a greater truth there. And that greater truth is the fact that God is continuously and constantly redeeming people over and over again, showing grace to people over and over again, even our enemies, which is why the story says Jonah got swallowed by a whale in the first place. He didn't want to minister to his enemies. So there's a greater truth there that goes beyond did he or didn't he. The greater truth is, wow. God is at work showing grace, even in the most unlikely of places. Do we see the difference between literal truth and some of those deeper truths? I, I, I think so, Jonathan. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, when, whenever I have these conversations with people, I, what I always try to point out is that um, the focus on literalism is actually a pretty modern phenomenon. That's something that arises with the advent of science. And um, if you just Google biblical fundamentalism, it does not date back to like Jesus. It dates back to like the 19th century. And in fact, the ancient and medieval interpreters of scripture from origin in the 200s, like Dante in the 1300s, had a much richer view of scripture. They, had, they saw it on the literal level, but also read on the allegorical level, the moral level, and the eschatological level. So four levels of meanings that now are all collapsed to just the literal. So I think what we're doing is progressive church, you know, we're, we're, Yes, we're modern, we have contemporary worship, we're hip and cool in many ways, Um, but we're also trying in some ways to capture some of the ancient richness of um, scriptural interpretation. So, were you going to say something? No, I was going to ask you, no, go ahead. 
please. Uh, I was going to ask. Uh, well, I was going to ask, like, you know, I, I like my answer. I like your answers. But I do think so, uh, some people very legitimately wrestle with what about some of the deeper kind of literal truths that really undergird so many of our lives, like the death and the resurrection of Jesus, the literal existence of heaven and hell. If we f it feels dangerous to start becoming fuzzy with, like, whether those things literally exist or not. How, do you, how would you respond? I mean, I agree fully. I mean, they're important, important parts of our faith, right? And so uh, being that they're so important, we want to devote our entire episode next week to responding to the questions as to whether or not there is literal truth in heaven and hell, in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and all of the rest. Um, it's just too big to leave for the very end of this conversation. And so you can post in the comments if you have any specific questions you would like us to address around the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. And uh, we also will be posting um, links to sermons, books, and podcasts on this very topic around scriptural interpretation. We're so excited that you are going to be a part of this ongoing conversation with us. And we are glad that you are here for our inaugural Theological Thursday. Thanks, everyone. Bye.